Hello, I'm Gerard Fisher from RAP and I'm directing the project to RAP on the development and implementation of buying guidance and specifications for buyers and specifiers of electrical and electronic products in the retail sector. As part of this work, we've developed summaries of different product categories in order to identify where failure modes are occurring and how they can be avoided through specifying components, design and user guidance best practice. This webinar will focus on microwave ovens. After I've reviewed the project objectives, Lee Holloway of Eco3, one of the technical experts who's helped to develop this product summary, will talk through the key highlights of the summary. Finally, I'll conclude the webinar and discuss next steps and where to find further information. Through RAP's Electronic Products Pathfinder Group, industry recognised a need to identify design changes needed to increase the life of selected electrical products by bolstering durability. The end result will be guidance development for technical managers, buyers and suppliers to provide industry standard accessible content. A first step has been to research the most common failure modes within the product summaries which provide a first step towards the development of more detailed guidance documents. In partnership with the Pathfinder members we've selected washing machines, fridge freezers, vacuum cleaners, microwave ovens, kettles and televisions for assessment in these product guidance notes. The structure of the summaries is the same for each product and will include an introduction on how to use the document, the short-term failures that may result in a product being returned to you, the long-term failures that prevent it from reaching its long-term life, and then best practice in terms of component specification, design and user instructions. Finally, it will identify the opportunities for lifetime extension. So now for more detail on this product and handing over to our technical expert. Thanks Gerard. Uh, what we're going to do now is look at the microwave oven product summary in a little bit more detail to, to explain some of the um, information that's contained within it, uh, where we'll identify faults, causes, uh, best practice. We'll also go on to look at what opportunities might exist within designing uh, microwave ovens to become more reliable. Um, so let's start with this um, example of short-term faults and, and example causes. We've undertaken a lot of research during this work uh, in terms of the specific product and how they fail, what causes those failures, when those failures occur during the life, uh, life cycle. And it's very difficult to split very specifically into short-term and long-term. So some of these listed here may well be a longer term fault but we, we've tried to split them into a short and uh, short and long term as a, as a, a general um, idea here really. So you've got a whole list of things that may may actually go wrong, high voltage diodes and other components failing, uh, issues with the magnetron, the touchpad or the buttons, the, the, the um, controls on the outside of the, the microwave oven, um, interior lamps can fail and then the other moving parts such as the turntable drive mechanism and plate so these are all faults that may occur and, and obviously here what we, we have examples of why that might happen. So the high voltage and other components may fail because of poor quality construction, uh, poor quality components. They may have actually been damaged during the assembly of the oven. Um, if they've been caught or knocked it, it, it could have caused an issue which then manifests itself as a fault later in the product life. Um, the magnetron, which is the main uh, source of microwaves, is the, the source of microwaves within the microwave oven. Um, that could overheat due to uh, unsuitable location of the oven. If it's not in a place where you get sufficient cooling, then this can cause problems. It could be unstable or poor quality um, power supply. So if the power getting to the magnetron isn't of the correct quality, um, if there are spikes in it or it's an uneven supply, then it can cause issues with that component. Touch pattern controls can be ingress of dirt and water during use or the fact that the user has used some form of um, cleaning agent which is unsuitable. Or it could be just a, a general wear and tear failure where the, the item isn't kind of up, up to um, the job as it were, that the, it's not been made robust enough. Um, interior lamps, they will fail. Um, if an interior lamp is a filament lamp then it could have a low lifetime. Um, obviously it comes on and off and it's got to deal with the heat within the microwave oven and the steam that's generated, uh, all the conditions inside. 
so it may be that the lamp is unsuitable for uh, that particular application and uh, it needs to be a specific type to make it last longer turntable and drive mechanism and plate they can be jammed by uh, food residues and, and the user not cleaning them properly um, sometimes they can physically wear out although this is this is less common so these are the, the, the shorter term faults that we've identified if we go on to look at some of the longer term um, issues you'll see that again you have issues possibly with the magnetron um, but we also have some issues relating to surface corrosion and damage turntable and, and drive mechanisms again safety interlock switches on the door which is a common feature of a microwave that they have a safety interlock to ensure that when you open the door the machine turns off and general mechanical failures on the door so again some of the causes here the magnetron if it's a short-term failure it, as we discussed it's likely to be power supply issues if it's a longer term failure it could just be poor design of the magnetron that it, it, it's um, not going to last as long as maybe it should Internal surface corrosion and damage can be manufacturing fault because the coating hasn't adhered to the substrate um, as well as it could or it could be the fact that it's been left covered with food by the user and that food has damaged the coating or that they've tried to clean it off with something that has um, damaged the coating as well. Turntable or stereo drive mechanisms again there's a motor that drives these so one of the failure modes can be the bushes or the motor failing it can also be an overheat on the motor that, that stops um, the rotation of either the stirrer or the turntable safety interlock switches poor design insufficiently robust you got to remember that the door on a microwave oven will be opened hundreds thousands of times during its life cycle and therefore latches and switches and mechanisms have to um, be able to, to deal with this but you can also get arc erosion causing wear if it's an electrical switch that's uh, connected so when you open the door it breaks a connection this can actually generally wear out over time you do get some generic issues with doors locking mechanism failure hinge damage failure again could be down to user error the way that people are using the machine doing things that, that really they shouldn't be doing with the machine and putting weights onto the door but it could be the fact that the hinge or the other parts haven't actually been specified robustly enough and therefore they're not going to last so if we look at um, best practice so what, what could be done within the design or specification of, of microwave ovens to ensure that they are more reliable well it, we can split this into component specification test standards user instruction and design if we look at specifications then we might want to be looking at reliable electrical and electronic components for example you may say a switch must be able to handle 20,000 actuations a motor must last at least 2,000 hours parts such as switches and um, uh, catches door locks and things are designed to withstand 20,000 stress strain cycles and you might say for example lights have to last more than a given number of hours so these are all things that you can um, specify when you're looking at purchasing components and, 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 and designing these products. Good quality internal coatings so the materials, so we don't get the corrosion issue that uh, we identified in, in the, the fault modes. Um, that could be a better quality coating, that could be actually using a different material such as uh, stainless steel. Um, there are also test standards you may want to consider. Um, as with some of the other products we've looked at there are no standards on microwave durability as a unit there are standards on component reliability such as uh, there's a BSEN 61270-1 which is capacitors in microwave ovens and that does include an endurance test there's also a, a slightly more general standard uh, another BSEN 136002 which specifies uh, quality assessment for electronic components there's no e EU eco label for microwaves there is a EN standard for safety there are various performance standards and there's also a humidity te testing of touchpad control standard which is an EN 60068 
Um, so again, these may be things that you can utilize to, to ensure you get a more reliable product. General design requirements, they need to have good cooking performance, low energy consumption. So good design features for durability would be looking at the opening mechanisms designed not to distort wear or fracture. You might want to look at points of moisture and dirt ingress and how to deal with those to help increase reliability. So there's a, a number of things that, that could be done. User instruction could be very important to the um, reliability, overall reliability of a, um, a microwave oven. User instruction should be very clear, should be short and with diagrams, easy to understand. Things like, for example, with the microwave oven, the importance of making sure it's placed correctly for correct airflow, uh, which will stop the chance of overheating, which will dramatically affect the reliability of the product. Um, so those are all things that you could consider in best practice. If we now just look at the kind of general issues for uh, durability and, and reliability within a microwave oven. Microwaves contain a mixture of high voltage electronics, mechanical components, etc. Specification of these components and correct choices of materials which are suitable for changes in temperature and humidity etc are very important to reliability so as well as specifying um, motors and lamps and components that last a certain time you may also need to look at the environment in which those work and how temperature and humidity affects them. Achieving good reliability will require good engineering design expertise and good quality manufacturing these can be assessed only really by product testing by the manufacturer and uh, the data is very useful if it's available to buyers, uh, commercial buyers of, of these particular products. So it may be that you want to start requesting test data from your suppliers. So what we have here is some example opportunities of how, where we've identified the causes of faults, where we've identified best practice to try and um, mitigate those faults and those those issues in terms of overall reliability what sort of opportunities do they actually offer for the changes in design so we've got two examples here on internal um, damage to a microwave or or the magnetron failure so we'll look at the second one as an example the magnetron can fail due to overheating main spikes uh, per construction etc it could be a late or an early failure um, the way you can address this and the opportunity exists in creating clear instructions on how to locate the microwave oven in terms of allowing enough airflow around it. Um, this is something that maybe isn't something the user realises and if you communicate this information to them properly then they, they could end up uh, making it more reliable by placing it in the right place. Um, you could introduce a mains filtering circuit into the machine to ensure that the, you don't get the spikes or the uneven power to the to the magnetron. Uh, and you may want to look at the actual quality of the magnetron, uh, one with proven reliability. So how do you do that? How do you actually implement those issues? Well, user instructions, as, as we've discussed, um, should be fitted to the machine. Um, this should be in a prominent place, somewhere that the user sees them and understands them when they open uh, unpackage the item for the first time and, and realize it's an important issue specify to your suppliers that the oven needs to withstand main spikes and, and uneven power supplies so this this can be dealt with and you may also want to look at um, specifying magnetron quality um, there was an old BSEN standard um, 136002 which has uh, been withdrawn so shouldn't really be used but um, there may be other standards out there or other information that you can actually access to to help you look at the issue of reliability within the magnetron. Cost implications, uh, there shouldn't really be any cost implications to amend instructions. Um, you may need some additional components to help deal with main spikes but that really should be a very very low cost um, addition to, to the oven. It may be less than 50 pence per unit in terms of manufacturing costs and also um, if you are going to go for a high quality magnetron then this obviously will be more expensive but what you've got to remember is that any increase in costs can actually be um, offset in terms of 
more reliable products, less returns under warranty and the costs that that um, entails. And also better customer satisfaction and better brand uh, reliability image and you may actually gain more sales um, in the long run. Thank you. Full product summaries for all products will be available for download from RAP's website from January 2014. Full guidance documents will be made available by March 2014 and there will be further engagement on the format of these documents. For further details please contact RAP through Claire Ollerenshaw, the project manager at claire.ollerenshaw at rap.org.uk. Thank you for listening.